Six days from now, church services across Idaho will be allowed to resume, resume in person. Congregations are asked to follow CDC guidelines on things like social distancing and crowd size, but yeah, you might want to dust off the Sunday best because church on Sunday is back on. Well, last week we told you about some of the area's larger churches preparing to reopen and how they plan to spread people out inside. Will all denominations open their doors though? Joe Paris spoke with True Hope Church in Boise and found out why they will be waiting. Like almost everything these days, Sunday church services look different. Matt Preby, lead pastor at True Hope Collister in Boise, is one of many leading online services. You know, there's an ongoing joke that pastors only work on Sundays, right? Uh, I, I'm working more now than, than I ever have. Starting May 1st, though, under Governor Little's plan, places of worship can reopen if they stick to CDC guidance. Preby says for his congregation, the doors will remain closed, though, this Sunday. Are you getting a lot of questions about this upcoming Sunday? People saying, oh, are we are we having services in person? We are getting some questions. And so we're going to try to do micro gatherings within homes that, that follow those guidelines. Their guidelines, they still recommend gatherings of 10 or less at this point. Preby explains that decision was made with the entire community in mind. And so we're trying to do an approach that meets the needs of all of those people, being cautious and still doing our part to serve the community uh, and help make sure that we can keep COVID-19 um, at bay. If everything goes according to plan for True Hope, the goal is to open the doors in some way this summer. We will be able to go back into services of 50 or less. And then if things continue to go well with COVID-19, we will be back full bore uh, by mid-June. Getting there though will take a lot of work. There's a lot of logistics we have to figure out. Um, you know, we still need to social distance even inside the building. We still need to make sure that we're cleaning our buildings at a heightened level. And even then, community leaders know that getting back to normal will take some time until the vaccine comes along and we know we're beyond this for sure, we have to do our part uh, and be an active part of this community um, and, and not just go full bore um, recklessly. We need to be sensitive to the overall community while meeting the needs of the people that want to gather. So the pandemic, it, it canceled and it postponed countless events. And there was questions before everything started, how would religious groups like churches handle anniversaries and weddings? And uh, an interesting conversation I had with Pastor Matt today, Brian, he told me he was actually part of a Zoom funeral. I and mean, it's a real reminder that while things have been postponed, life has continued and has presented some very difficult uh, situations. Pastor Matt said, like a Zoom funeral, for example, they've just had to get creative and make the best of it. Life does continue, except for those involved in a funeral, I would say, Joe. But I guess the question is, a lot of people we had here at the show asked us, why would churches be open if they do violate that 10 or more rule? Waiting still to hear back from the governor why churches were allowed, but I have a feeling it has something to do with the First Amendment and kind of answering some of the feedback he's heard from that. But we'll get that answer from him eventually. Thank you, Joe.